thanks for coming, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is a panel on finding your home in the free state. The panel leader is Michael Sylvia, who is a state rep and moved here in 2010, lives in the Lakes region. And then I will let him introduce the rest of the panel. Thank you, Phil. I'm Mike Sylvia, as he said, and uh, I moved here because of the free state, right? Woohoo! Thank you. And everybody has signed the pledge, right? Anybody dare stick up their hand that did not sign up yet? Hmm? All right. Cool. So uh, I'm in the Lakes region, which is the center of New Hampshire. These guys will complain about that, but... Yeah, not so much. We'll, we'll you know, discuss that as we go. So if you think of uh, uh, the Lakes region as the center, you're up here in uh, Coas County. It's Coas. Don't pronounce it any other way. And uh, representing Coas County will be uh, Eric Katman. And uh, we'll let you go ahead and tell us about uh, you. Oh, because I'm the, I'm the top. Oh, all right. As he said, my name is Eric Katman, and I live in Berlin, New Hampshire. Not Berlin, it's Berlin. If you say Berlin, they know you're not from here. And as he said, it's Coas County, not Coos. There's the umlaut. Um, so I'm actually a pre-stater, and my wife and I moved here 11 years ago from Concord, New Hampshire, and we bought... Uh, we came up here because property is very cheap up here. So if you're looking for a cheap property, you want to move to Coas County. Save the pitch for later. And I'll save the pitch for later. Um, I'm married, four kids, wife, she's at home, and um, I own um, a couple of businesses. And then, uh, so if we're at uh, Coas up here, we're going to slide down to the uh, seacoast for you. I got to get my left and my right. Uh, properly acquainted. So the seacoast is over here, is it? Is that correct? Next, next to the Am I doing okay? All right, the seacoast. And representing the seacoast is another New Hampshire native, Mike Blair. Hi guys, uh, as he said, I'm Mike Blair. I uh, grew up in the Lakes region and uh, live in the seacoast now. Um, both regions obviously uh, have great appeal. The, uh, the seacoast region, uh, quite a bit more expensive than, than living up here. Um, uh, but uh, very happy Tell to be up here. You. This is about you right now. You're introducing yourself. Sure. I, I'm, like I said, <laughs> I grew up here in New Hampshire um, and uh, uh, lived here pretty much my whole life except for some, uh, some time I spent outside the state, uh, living all around the, the country, different places, um, but came home because uh, even though we've got some tough winters, this is, uh, I think, the best place to live. Thank you, Mike. And uh, as we travel around the clock, we get down to the southern part of the state, the big city of Manchester, and representing Manchester will be Mark Warden. Thank you, Mike. I'm Mark Warden, and I'm in the real estate business, so if you have any questions uh, throughout our, speak, our talk today, come on up to the uh, microphone and ask your questions about rentals, land, uh, differences, property taxes, zoning, whatever you want. I moved here in 2007 from Nevada, from Las Vegas, inspired by the Free State Project, and I've been in the real estate business ever since, and I'm also a political activist. Thank you, Mark. And uh, so now we've gone down to the lower section of the state, down there near Massachusetts. Anybody want to move away from Massachusetts? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, now we uh, travel over to the southwest portion of the state, and uh, the big city of Keene, represented by Ian Freeman. Hi, I'm Ian Freeman. I host a radio show called Free Talk Live. I'm also the organizer of the Keen Bension, which is a good chance for you to come out and check out Keen if you're interested in it. Um, I've been in New Hampshire since 2006, and it's been an awesome nine years. Thank you, Ian. And uh, as we get over to the west side there, the Upper Valley is what it's called. And uh, we have Jody Underwood to tell us about that, but after she tells us about herself. Exactly. Hi, I'm Jody Underwood. I'm one of the faces of Bardo Farm, which you might have heard of. Uh, my husband and I and another couple who, who owned the farm moved up to New Hampshire back in 2007. It's, um, it's really impressive, the early movers up here and, free, and pre-staters. This is great. 
Nice, thank you, Jody. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna give you a, a, our uh, a three minute pitch for each of our areas. I guess, I don't know, should I save the, the, the lakes region for the last, the best for last, or should I kick it off? Being, you know, the center of the state, why don't you start? Center of the state, okay. The lakes region. Uh, lake Winnipesaukee is the big lake, and there's a couple other ones, uh, Winnesquam and Ossipee. No, no, it's, uh, uh, oh, Peachy, oh, Peachy, yay, I'm yeah. not gonna get thrown out. Okay, so one of the coolest things about the lakes region, we've got this amazing, one-of-a-kind thing in the world, it's called Fun Spot, <laughs> all right? It's the biggest arcade in the world, and the really cool thing about it, long ago, they put up a billboard with their marquee, and one of the signs that rolls by on the marquee asks you, who is John Galt? Uh, yeah. All right, so that's what you're gonna get in the lakes region. Now, because I don't even have a timer on myself, so I might just go over. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so uh, lakes region. We've got the lakes, which is good for all kinds of recreation. We've got water skiing, boating, sailing, all the good summertime sports, sorry, drifting away from my microphone, and hiking, a lot of great act outdoor activities. It's particularly busy in the summertime. Everybody from Massachusetts has a vacation home up in the Lakes region, so they're all there. Um, man, the good things that we have, it's wicked busy in the summer, vacation destination. We've got camping, hiking, sailing, water skiing, boating, fishing, bike week. Motorcycle riders out there, bike week in Laconia was just last week, brings in a lot of people. Good fun, we've got, well, I'm gonna claim uh, the uh, NASCAR track in Loudoun because uh, why not? Pretty close. <laughs> uh, certainly restaurants, big uh, local food farming movement in the area. When you get to the lakes region, the people there are us. It really, you fall right in place with them. You say stuff and they're like, yeah, absolutely. They just haven't been saying it. So you'll feel right at home there. The cities, towns in the area are gonna be uh, Laconia, Wolfboro, Ossipee, Alton, Plymouth, uh, Meredith, Tilton, Franklin. So uh, when you move, consider the Lakes region. It's a great destination. Ah, now, back to my moderator job. Uh, we're going back to the top of the state. Eric Catman. <clears throat> okay. Oh, now he's going to whip the timer out. Oh, jeez. All right. Coas County, why is it the best county in the state? Number one, it's the largest county in New Hampshire. Least amount of population. We only have 32,000 people who live in this whole wide, vast county. We did some research that's about one person for like every two million feet. So if you like space, Coas County is for you. Do you like to ATV? Coas County is the only county in New Hampshire where you can ride your ATV pretty much anywhere in the county, including the city of Berlin, Lancaster, Colebrook, Gorham, Lancaster, you name it, you can ride your ATV. There are certain roads you can't, which is basically the major highways. We are the largest ATV use area in the whole eastern seaboard. We are the destination for vacationers also from Massachusetts who have a lot of property up here as well. We also have lakes, rivers, streams, ponds, and thousands and thousands of acres to hunt and fish and hike and boat and whatever else you want to do. If you like subsistence lifestyle like I do, although I live in the city of Berlin, um, <laughs> um, there are plenty of land for sale up here. Real estate, as Mark will tell you, is dirt cheap. You can buy homes mm, in a lot of places in uh, Coas County for very little money. Give you an example. I purchased my home in Berlin, 1,700 square feet, four bedroom, one and a half bath, on the river on Main Street in Berlin with a lot next to me that I also own for $37,500. Um, I just helped a free state family move in from Long Island, New York. They came from a 950 square foot house. 
They bought a house also in Berlin, three-family home. They paid $12,000 in cash. Another free state family, uh, a friend of mine who is also in Berlin, he transferred here through his work at the federal prison. He bought his house cash for $35,000. Um, and there's many, many more examples of that. So I look at Kowas County as a place that you can live very inexpensively. I don't like to um, live for work. I like to work to live but I don't want to bust my hump to do that. I have four children, I want to spend time, I want to hike, I want to fish, I want to boat, I want to enjoy life, I don't want to bust my hump. The other thing too, I look at Coas County and the political spectrum. I also um, am very politically active. I know that some people here know me. <laughs> I rant on Facebook a lot and I was very politically active. I was the county chair for Coas County for two years. I was the vice chair for Coas County for two years. I was also Ron Paul's campaign manager for Kawas County, which, by the way, was the only county that Ron Paul won in New Hampshire. That gives you a, a mentality of Kawas County because Kawas County, people in Kawas County, okay, his three months is up. People in Kawas County are very independent minded. They like to be left alone. So if that's for you, ask any kind of questions and I'll help answer them. Thank you, Eric. And uh, we'll be taking questions right after our first uh, introductory round. <laughs> the big question of the day, internet. All right. Since he opened that can of worms, I saw postings on Facebook about, oh my God, the internet sucks up here, it's so slow. Actually, that's not true. So when the federal government gave all this millions of dollars of grant money, um, there's actually fiber optic that runs all through Coas County. And I represent a company called Skywire, and we pump 100 megs a minute, <clears throat> airless, wirelessly, and it's all over Coas County. It's not in Lancaster yet, but within the next month, we're opening in Lancaster, and then about two or three more months, we're opening in Whitefield. We'll be countywide, wireless internet, as well as cell coverage through our backbone, so you'll have coverage as far as your cell phones as well. Okay. Uh Let's see, we're going back in our regular rotation and uh, the Seacoast, Mike Blair. Hey guys, uh, like I said earlier, I grew up in the, uh, the Lakes region, but now live uh, out by the Seacoast. You won't hear me say anything about, bad about living anywhere in the state because I think it's, it's absolutely phenomenal wherever you go. Um, like Eric mentioned earlier, uh, those of us who've uh, grown up here in New Hampshire and go back generations, tend to be somewhat resistant to outsiders coming in. So that might probably be, no matter where you move in New Hampshire, um, one of the initial hurdles you'll deal with. Doesn't mean we don't like people coming in, it just means we're, we're uh, a little bit harder to get to know. Once you're in, you're in, but until then you're out. Um, living down on the seacoast, things are quite a bit more expensive down there. Um, house prices and taxes are, are quite a bit higher than they are in other parts of the state. Um, like was mentioned earlier, there's just about everything uh, entertainment and opportunity-wise available to you in the Seacoast. Uh, from out outdoor recreation, in the summer you've got swimming, um, fishing, hunting, there's, all, all those opportunities are available. In the winter, cross-country skiing, um, there's a lot of bike trails down around the Seacoast area. There's not many uh, as you get off the Seacoast, um, but, but right there around Portsmouth and, uh, and uh, into, into a little bit into the Maine, there's some bike trails and stuff too. Um, I like to think of the Seacoast as kind of the center for arts and entertainment in New Hampshire. There, there's a lot of history in New Hampshire. Despite what our friends from Massachusetts might tell you, the revolution started in New Hampshire. Um, and, and our history around there, you just got to dig, you don't have to dig too, too deep to find it. It's right there under the surface. Um, also, I, I, I think Portsmouth affords a great opportunity uh, when you move to New Hampshire uh, for work opportunities. Uh, if, if you're working in Portland, Maine, or Boston, or Nashua, Manchester, Portsmouth's a nice central spot with the highways uh, to, to get easily and rapidly to any, any location um, if, if your job opportunities don't happen to lie in New Hampshire, but you still want to live here. So, and I'm available for questions on either the uh, Seacoast or uh, Lakes region, or really anything on I'm being a New Hampshireman. What's that? 
Oh, and the music scene, like I said, the arts and entertainment in the, in the Seacoast is just incredible. There's, uh, you know, a, a vibrant and thriving uh, music scene in, in the Seacoast as well that I, I really haven't found anywhere else in the state. It, it, it's quite unique and, and very exciting. Thank you, Mike. And uh, now the big city of Manchester, Mark Warden. All right, thanks, Mike. The south central part of the state is the most populous part of New Hampshire. And we talk about the Merrimack Valley, which runs along the Merrimack River. So between Concord and Manchester, and then Manchester and Nashua, heading uh, north to south, is your greatest concentration of, of population. And I'd say about 250,000 people live in that general area. Um, among those three towns or those three cities. So that's where you're gonna have the most jobs. That's the, the number one um, thing holding back people from moving to New Hampshire, typically, is finding a job here. So we do a very low unemployment rate in and around uh, Nashua and Manchester, and in, in fact, in the entire state. Um, so that's a good place to start. Also, a lot of people live in southern New Hampshire and commute into northern Massachusetts for their jobs. It's very, very common. There's a lot of good uh, high-tech jobs in the Boston area, a lot of financial jobs, a lot of um, big pharma and engineering jobs. So we'd rather you live and work in New Hampshire, but if you have to get a job and you can't find one here, you can always live in Nashua, Derry, Salem, any of the, the lower tier towns, and then commute every day to Massachusetts, along with a couple hundred thousand others that do that. Um, Real estate there will be a little bit more um, expensive. The closer you get to the Massachusetts border, typically it's going to cost a little bit more. Rents are a bit higher than, than way up here. But uh, that, that there's also a lot going on politically. So a lot of singles moving to this state who don't have a family. They just want to have a community and an instant social life. Anywhere near Manchester is the, way to, is the best place to find that because you have a lot of other people in the free state and libertarian community. And it's a great place to meet new friends. Thank you, Mark. And uh, back to the Southwest in uh, Keene, uh, Ian. Yeah, so um, I moved to Keene back in 2006 because, not because it was the best area to move to. In fact, you could argue it's one of the worst. Uh, Keene is one of the highest taxed. It is sort of known as uh, one of the most statist places in New Hampshire, if you think about it. It's right in between Vermont and Massachusetts. It's right down there in that little corner. There's a college there, too, so you've got the college town aspect. Uh, it was a challenge, uh, you know, and it still is. There's a, it's a very lefty kind of town for New Hampshire, right? So, like, New Hampshire lefties are different from where you might be from. And uh, Keene is definitely a place that it's going to be harder to win an election in because of that. Um, also, there's been a lot of activism that has happened there, and so people on the streets are more likely to know about the Free State Project and have an opinion about it one way or the other. And uh, the opinions tend to be fairly strong. So if you're looking for a good challenge, you should probably move to Keene. Uh, but the property taxes are ridiculous, so if you want to avoid that, there's the surrounding towns that are much lower in, uh, in property tax. In fact, I thought the Free Town Project should have taken over Roxbury, population 200, right next door to Keene. It is t just to the east of Keene, so you could buy one piece of property and put up some tiny houses and literally take over the town meeting with probably 40 people. Um, and then you'd live next to Keene with all the amenities. Keene is nice because it's, uh, you know, you, you can talk about all the things you can do outside. You can do all those things everywhere in New Hampshire. If you're looking for outdoor sporting things, then that's everywhere. If you're looking for a mountain to climb, there's plenty of them. We've got Mount Monadnock uh, in Keene. There are lakes that you can go swim in. So, you know, there's plenty of recreational things to do. Um, but if you, you know, if you come out there, there's a good group of activists. Uh, Keene's nice because it's big enough to have nice amenities like, you know, we've got Walmart and Home Depot and Target and things like that, but yet it's small enough to where it was awarded one of the most walkable cities in the United States. And I think Portsmouth was one of the other ones, if I'm recalling correctly. But um, so, you know, I can easily walk across the city biking. I, if I get on my bike, I can get anywhere quicker pretty much than someone in a car. So it's a really nice, convenient little town and uh, it's fun. Thank you, Ian. And, uh Back to the uh, Upper Valley, and uh, Jody's been making notes, so she's going to use her full yeah. three minutes. I, I wish I could have done like a one-on-one -on -one to counter everything that these people said. Not just counter, but address. I mean, these people the, on the stage. 
Wow. I'll be careful, Mike. Sorry. I didn't know he had such... I mean, he's a state rep. You'd think he'd have a, a spine or something. Anyway. <laughs> thick, thick skin. Thick skin. <laughs> He is wasting my three minutes. What a strategy. What a politician. Okay, anyway. <laughs> All right, so I live in the Upper Valley, and that is, um, so I'll talk about that first, and then I'll talk about Croydon. So the Upper Valley has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the, well, the lowest in the state, and one of the lowest in the country. So we have a, a very good medical center, best in the state, I believe, and that's a lot of jobs. There's also Hypertherm, it's an engineering company, also a lot of jobs. People like working there. That place has one number one place to live, not to live, to work, sorry, in the state at least. Um, we have arts and culture because we have Dartmouth College in the area, uh, and we have, yeah, so I've said all that stuff. So the Upper Valley is great in that respect. We're right near Vermont, so we, there's a lot of shared stuff there. Um, <laughs> So Croydon. Croydon's a small town, about population 760, not quite the 200, um, but it's a, a very libertarian town. So instead of coming to take over the town, come join us, help us grow. We're setting things in motion just at the grassroots level. I'm on the school board, for example, and we just instituted school choice with the support of the town. They're all for it. Let's lower our taxes. Let's have the kids get the best education. We have a really good town like that. Um, I live on 210 acres. I have no neighbors. Uh, we live off the grid. We do what we want. We shoot off our back porch if that's what we want to do. Um, and Croydon itself has the second lowest uh, rate of property taxes around the state. Now, we can't beat Coas County in terms of how much it's going to cost for a house, but you can still get a really good deal in Croydon, especially with property taxes, although I can't compete with you on property taxes either. Mm -mm. Uh, in fact, I think there's an unincorporated part of Coas County that, I mean, there's no taxes there. Yeah. Um, Croydon has very low zoning, uh, very minimal zoning, and really the very small government in town doesn't really you, do what you want, like I said. Um, it, it, there are, so Grafton is also part of the Upper Valley, and I'm representing the whole Upper Valley here. They're, they're no zoning at all, although they still do have to follow state zoning laws. Um, but they have a bigger government than Croydon does, and they actually, they do. <laughs> they, they make sure you hit all of those things, and there are, are a lot of, um, I don't know, put policies in place that they have to follow. Um, we, internet's pretty good. That came to Croydon, high-speed internet came to Croydon about three years ago. Um, cell service, you have to be at the top of a hill, which we are. Um, but that Verizon has been talking to us about putting a tower up on our property, and our town will love us even more when that happens. Um, we have lakes, just like everybody else in the state, but not like Lake Winnipesaukee. Um, so we can still visit there, they let us. Um, we have uh, an ATV trail and a snowmobile trail that goes through our property, actually, so you can go all the way through New England into Maine from where we are. Um, and, yeah, uh, that's it. Our town welcomed us really quickly. Like I said, we feel right at home in Croydon. We fit right in. We have like-minded people. If they knew the label libertarian, they would identify with it. Thank you, Jody. And uh, now we'll, be, uh, we'll, we'll start entertaining questions, or I'll come up with some, and uh, please use the microphone. Thanks. Okay. Um, Step right up to it. Okay. I've been looking online for places to live, for rental property that's all over the state. And I haven't come up with anything less than $1,000. Why? Even in, even in Berlin. For under 1000 Yep. Oh, for, for rent? For rent. Hold on now. Oh, yeah, then you're not looking in the right spots. <laughs> well, where I'm from, I'm, li I'm limited to what I have to use for, as far as internet. The, so, the, rent, the average rent in, in uh, Berlin is probably $700 a month. I need to come talk to you then. <laughs> <laughs> but anywhere in the state is, has been like, there's places that are like $2,000. I'm like, you're crazy. Well, what, you have to consider that uh, rental costs also include property taxes, so that's going to be a factor in it. And uh, the realtor, Mark Warden, would... I do want to clarify for the rest of the crowd, part of your question has to do with renting a house, a single-family house. No, it's an apartment. I put, no, down, no, it's not. I've, I put down everything from when I, when I ask for what I want to rent, uh -huh. I'll put in different uh, things that, were, 
that we're interested in, put in an apartment. Um, I have put in single family house, um, modular homes, and I haven't found hardly anything under under a thousand. Maybe two properties under seven hundred. Okay, well we can help you with that uh, in the back of the room. Hey, Matthew, would you stand up, please? Matthew Ping in the blue shirt there is a property manager and he specializes in rentals and property management and working with landlords. And he can give you some, uh, some good guidance, particularly down in the Manchester area. Rent, two bedroom rents in uh, Manchester are 750 to 850. Three bedroom apartment, these are all apartments. Our uh, three bedroom apartments are 950 to 1100, 1200 in Manchester. It, it is very difficult to find a single family house to rent almost right. anywhere in the state, certainly in the southern part of the state. And you're right, they're fairly expensive. Right. That's because of uh, relatively high property taxes and certainly a shortage of that kind of housing. Well, and for a single family house with a yard, you're looking at right. probably fourteen, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars $2,000. But we can help you uh, if, uh, this, if you wanna see us after we're done here, okay. we can try to help you find uh, an apartment. If you find an apartment, if that's all you need, they're certainly available mm -hmm. all over the state for under $1,000 per month. Well, even and I can, oh, I was going to say, and I can also introduce you to a local broker here in the area who represents all of Northern New Hampshire, so. Okay. All right, thank you. Good, thank you. Thank you for the question. Got another one? Hi, thank you all for doing this. Um, I'm pursuing a computer science degree right now, and I was looking for jobs in the area, and there's a lot in the Boston area. I was wondering what, um, if you live in New Hampshire and work in Massachusetts, what I assume you fall under their income tax laws, and what are the tax situation like uh, for that? If you could speak to that. Mark? Yeah, that's true. If you work in Massachusetts, you have to pay New Massachusetts income tax, regardless of where you live. It's, it's, it's sad, but true. Yeah. Oh, comments from the outside can't be recorded, so. Come up to a mic. You can come up and tell come us to the it. microphone. Right. While she's walking up, I, I, just as an, an I'll, no, I'll go ahead talk. Yeah, so if you do work in Massachusetts and live in New Hampshire, so you will pay state taxes like on your, your pay stub, but when you go back for your return, it is a larger return that you get back from the state. They're still going to take some of your money because it's the state of Massachusetts and they really enjoy your cash. But you will get a larger percentage back than someone that lives and works in the state. And also if you're in IT in um, you're looking, I would say look in southern New Hampshire as well. Our companies aren't as um, published as the Massachusetts um, technology companies, but um, Manchester, the uh, Silicon Mills, um, you know, that's, what they're, that's what they're trying to be. There's a lot of high tech, more startup companies that will hire you if you reach out to them with your resume proactively. They may not have a position posted with your skills, but they may be looking for someone like you. You're bringing a unique skill set into New Hampshire. Sorry, I'm in human resources, so this is getting long. There are 2,900 people in the whole state of New Hampshire unemployed. 2,900. It's very low. So you're bringing in a unique skill set that's not here in New Hampshire, no matter what you do. Brittany, can you just clarify on the state tax? You're saying that the effective state tax rate will be a little bit lower it will be if you lower. don't live in Massachusetts. Yeah, so it'll be pulled out at the same rate while you're, while you're working, right. but when your return comes back, you're paying less. Is it around 7%? It's like 7% as it's 7 taking out, and I think, like he said, it's like 5%. When you get yeah. it back, yeah. Wait, Brittany has done a lot of recruiting in the past, and she speaks the same language as you about uh, computer science and IT and, and tech jobs, so yeah. you can talk to her later. It's been, it's been about a year since I was in that. Now I do sales recruiting if anyone's looking for a sales job. <laughs> <laughs> and also, so. oh, there's a very active Facebook page uh, uh, called FSP Jobs, Alert. jobs and FSP Jobs and Housing, yeah. so please frequent those and let us know what you're looking for and try to crowdsource some good opportunities for you. Like, question? Yeah, having and still living in the People's Democratic Step Republic of Massachusetts. Oh, it's, it's, come on, brother, join I us. I know, 5.25% is the state income tax. That's what it is. Okay. Um, so I don't know what you'll get back with it up here. Oh, that but, works, um, yeah. Okay, five and a quarter percent. Yes. And you may, if it's a little bit less, if you live here, it's still going to be, you know, 5%. So. so while we wait for the next question, I will. Ask you to step up on the microphone. Hello. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for doing this. It's very appreciated. And I'll just do a little calf workout. Um, are there any good resources online um, that we can use 
uh, to find listings, like other than Craigslist or PadMapper, for example? You talking about real estate listings for properties for sale or for rent? Or jobs. Well, uh, right now I'm just looking at renting, but potentially in the future, you know. Yeah, the single best resource for rentals around here in southern New Hampshire is Craigslist. They're the Realtor.com or the local MLS has a few listings for rentals, but they're sparse. Um, the second best way to find a rental in southern New Hampshire is to drive around the neighborhoods. There are a lot of owners who don't bother to put in Craigslist because they don't like all the phone calls. So uh, you just drive around in a neighborhood you like and call on the signs. Or post in Facebook and say, hey guys, I'm moving to Concord or Manchester or Coas County. Uh, do you know of anybody nearby? Somebody from your church, somebody from your uh, civic club, somebody from work, one of your neighbors who has something for rent. So if you're on Facebook, that's a good uh, resource also. Right, and that's probably true for the more populated areas as Craigslist, but if you come up to the Upper Valley, they're quite old-fashioned. We have weekly newspapers that people post in all the time, and, you need to, and they're online. You just have to find out the names of them, so Upper Valley newspapers might get you those. Same for any of the other areas. And I was also going to say the same thing. We have uh, a lot of local free papers, and also on... On Facebook, there's uh, like three or four different Facebook communities just in this general area that sell everything that you can imagine, including rental homes, whatever. What do you got, Margo? Oh, look, we're out of, we're out of time. <laughs> I knew you would do that. Hi, I'm Margo Keys. My husband and I and four daughters moved here 10 years ago in 2005. And I just wanted to let everyone know it's not so much a question as a statement. Since I live outside Concord and we're not represented up there, um, in the center, true center of the state. Um, you have to understand perspective. We came from Minnesota. You can put eight New Hampshire's in Minnesota. So when I say, oh, I'm in this town, oh, you're far away in that town, that's maybe five minutes. So you really have to understand, you know, when you go, oh, we're gonna go from here to Manchester, we go through 17 towns. So you have to understand the scale. And it's sometimes, when I worked in Welcome Wagon when we first moved here, and people were like, what's well, so far away? I'm like, that's two towns. That's 10 and a half minutes. You know, you just didn't understand that perspective. And some of us landlords have properties coming up for sale or for rent, and that happens very frequently. So if you can't find something this moment, give it a day. It's kind of like New Hampshire weather. Wait five minutes. You know, that's how it goes. So um, there isn't a bad place to live in New Hampshire. Concord, we're half an hour from the south. We're an hour to the beach. We're an hour to skiing. It's, that's right. Everything's great in New Hampshire. There's not a really bad place. Okay. There may be a sketchy yeah. room. No, yeah, there is. There is? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't live in Claremont, New Hampshire. Oh. The school system sucks. The taxes are high. There, you could find rentals there, and if that's your main goal, go ahead. But then you'll want to move to Croydon. I'm just saying. Okay, I stand corrected, but if you get to Claremont and find you don't like it, you, it's real close to move somewhere else nice. So come although, and join us. Although Coas County actually doesn't quite fit that bill because the towns aren't like five minutes apart. For instance, if you want to go to Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, it's an hour and 15 minute drive. Same county, long trip. <laughs> Hi, my name is John and I'm looking for a vacation or um, retirement yeah. property together, yeah. thank you. Um, being from lower New York, um, we're looking at southern New Hampshire. So I'm looking, what's, what do you think is the best bang for the buck, let's say? Vacation home in the southern or, part of the county. Well, vacation retirement. And or if things get better, you know, oh, I can work, <laughs> work there also. Why southern New Hampshire? Uh, keeps close to other family. I could still travel four and a half hours out of lower New York, let's say. Well, I would say you just then want... It's a, then it's a gateway to go up top to New Hampshire. You know, New York City from here is only about five and a half hours. You know that. I did it this morning. Yeah, and I've done it a lot, and I'm, I'm with him. Okay. It's an extra hour, so what? Right. Choose a part of the state that's good. You want a vacation home? Go to the lakes. Go to the seacoast. You know what? When you add those extra hours on top of the day, they aren't just an extra hour. They're, they're multiplied. They're quantified. That's not the New Hampshire mentality. Every state has its own mentality. I, I guess. And I'm from New York, so I can talk to you about this. Okay. I guess it just depends on what you're looking for. I mean, do you want a nice house on a lake somewhere? There's plenty of lakes. Um, you know, there's plenty of that kind of stuff. 
And if you're in the southwest, if you're in the southern tier of New Hampshire, obviously right. you're going to be closer to New York. Uh, the Keene area, the southwestern area, is right next to I-91. It's right. four hours down to New York, four, maybe four and a half. With so, what, what towns do you think are the best? You know, it's hard to say. There's some towns surrounding Keene where the taxes are lower. There's some lakes kind of towns where there's a lot more lakefront properties available. I mean, I would say talk to Mark Warden and they can tell you what sort of things are available there. But th there's such a variety between the towns. Like Keene is this liberal stronghold, but this, the towns surrounding it are, you know, Republican, if you will. So um, it's just it's very different. Uh, you just got to you just got to look, really. I'll throw a pitch in for the seacoast as well. I mean, besides, you know, obviously right on the seacoast is well out of my price range. It may be in yours, but there's also several lakes, uh, lots of riverfront property. Uh, little towns, if you get right outside of Portsmouth, are less expensive. You know, some of the, some of the little towns that had mills are up-and-coming cities like uh, um, New Market. It's uh, one little town that's having a resurgence. Uh, Durham is right outside of... Uh, uh, Portsmouth, that's a little college town. That's where University of New Hampshire is. There's, there's a lot of stuff right in, the, in that area that gives you immediate access to, uh, to I-95 if you still wanted to be able to get down to New York quickly. And then um, I had a family who bought a home, and it's their weekend getaway home. It's my old house that I had when I first moved here, and they're from Providence, Rhode Island, so they bought it for like $20,000. All right. Thank you. Okay, well, we wait for the next question. Um, so everybody's worried about jobs. What about uh, uh, opportunities for entrepreneurs? I know that uh, Lakes Region is uh, kind of a mix. There's plenty of jobs in the summer, but people kind of scramble for, um, you know, making their own way in the, uh, in the off season. So uh, how, let's uh, get Mike's uh, pitch on that. You're probably asking the wrong guy on that. Uh, the the, the Seacoast, like I said, has, um, a, a vibrant population. It, there's a lot of people that have come to the Seacoast from elsewhere, and a lot of that has been for business. Um, the uh, the former uh, Pease Air Force Base, which is now a trade port, has uh, there's always new businesses coming in there. Lots of uh, entrepreneurial opportunities uh, in in that region. Um, there's probably a great many as, as you get over towards the Nashua, Manchester area as well. Uh, I don't know if you'd find as many up in this area but I'm not an expert on this area. I would say Kowas County, yeah. If you are a self-starter, you can make it in Kowas County. And what do I mean by that? I haven't worked a real job in 10 years. I moved up here and I was selling cars at Berlin City dealerships. I don't mind selling cars, it just wasn't my favorite, but and one day I said, you know what? I'm tired of working for the man. I want to work for myself. And I created my own job. Actually, I've created three businesses for myself. I work for myself. I make plenty of money. And the opportunities up here to find a need are great. I'll give you another example. I'm just about to start another business. Why? I saw a need. It's not utilized at all. And so I'm going to go for it. There's plenty of opportunity to do that in Coas County. I will say, yes, we are the highest unemployment in the state. We do have a little bit more welfare up here. <laughs> um, but you know what? The opportunities are here if you're a self-starter, if you're a carpenter. You know, actually, I will tell you, the trades, if you're in the trades business, um, plumber, carpenter, electrician, needed, needed, needed. There's a lot of summer homes up here, a lot of summer camps, and a lot of these people don't know how to fix anything. And then when they pick up the phone book, they're trying to like, ah. Oh, I don't know who to call. So plenty of opportunity if you're in the trades, for sure. It, quickly, just because I see there's more questions. Um, so Croydon, zoning in Croydon is you can do whatever you want. Like I said, opening businesses is one of the things that there's no zoning about at all. So we started Shaolin Rifle Works as well in Croydon. Um, and it's, you know, if you're going to use the internet for your business, it's even better. You can start a business anywhere if you have the desire and the energy. Yeah, I mean, you. Um, I think you want to look at 
the regulations in the different towns and cities, right? So if you want to be in a city like Keene or Manchester, you're obviously going to be dealing with more city bureaucrats in order to open doors to a physical location. You just go outside of those cities, just on the, you know, just outside the border, and you're probably dealing with significantly less of, as far as regulations and zoning rules and things like that. So it's a trade-off, of course. You're going to be paying less in rent in those other outside areas, uh, but at the same time, there, there's not as much population there. So maybe, you know, again, there's a lot of balancing. I just want to jump in really quick because um, zoning has been mentioned a couple of times. There's only one major city or town, whatever, in Coas County that has zoning, and that's Berlin. Other than that, the whole county is basically zoned free of anything. So, Go to another question. Yeah, Step right up. Hi. Um, considering the move up to New Hampshire, obviously just – to be left alone from clipboard carrying bureaucrats and whatnot, and maybe you can answer this as a legislator and maybe you as somebody who lives off the grid. Um, there's a few instances across the United States where, is that better? Where people are being um, prosecuted by certain townships, municipalities, or their state for living off the grid, and I'm wondering if that is an issue up here in New Hampshire, if you're gonna have that. I don't that. even understand the question. Is, is somebody gonna come to your right, house? Right, and I still don't understand the question. Oh. So I think no. <laughs> you don't have that I mean, problem. Up what, here. I don't even. What again? There's no zoning about it. Okay. Yeah. I have two friends that live off the grid here in Coas County, and there's no issue at all. Okay. Are you aware of that? We built our own septic. Oh. I mean. You would have to be. You'd have to be in an unzoned area to really have a certainty that you'd be okay. I know that in Keene, for instance, if you try to build a new house, they have some sort of requirement that you hook up to the city sewer system. So I think you're going to find things like that in places like Manchester and the, the cities. But you probably don't want to live off the grid in the city anyway. So odds are good you're, you're going to be fine. Yeah, you're going to want to look for one of the rural towns, basically. And even the rural towns here can be close to a city. You can be 30, 40 minutes from a big uh, shopping center or something and still live way out in the boondocks. But you're going to want something like that with very limited zoning regulations. But there are plenty of towns like that. There are, over, there are over 200 towns in New Hampshire, and probably 180 of them would be great for you. I live off the grid. Um, we're a half hour from the big box stores and five minutes from the highway. It's really easy to get from Croydon to anywhere. Okay, so. thank you. Next question. Hi. Um, can any of you explain a little bit about the religious or specifically Christian communities in your areas? Christian communities. I know that uh, Laconia has a, I think it's a Catholic school. Um, I think Lakes Region is, is pretty conservative, generally. Um, but it's, I don't think that the the nature of New Hampshire is, is too much of an out and in your face kind of religion. Um, I think people who kind of pri practice quietly. Mike? I, I can speak that, to that a little bit. I lived in Mississippi for a while. In Mississippi, religion was in your face all the time. Everybody wanted to know as soon as they shook your hand what church you went to. <laughs> right, uh, you're not going to find that in New Hampshire. Uh, obviously, if, you, if you're practicing or not practicing, generally nobody gives a it has a concern about it. That's your choice entirely. I will say New Hampshire is, um, at least when I grew up here as a kid, it was predominantly French Canadian or Irish, so there's a, a strong um, Catholic background. And there's also the, uh, you know, the Congregationalist uh, Old New England um, background. So it, it's, it's here, it's available, nobody cares what you do. So I could tell you Coas County, I'll say Burling because that's where I live. But Coas County tends to be a lot more Christian and conservative. A lot of Catholics in Berlin because Berlin is a very French-speaking town, so there's a lot of French Catholics. Um, but I, I also go to church, and in Berlin there's actually a really nice community of churches. A lot of the different churches we get together once a month. We do a lot of different things. Um, I also volunteer with the Salvation Army. We do a lot of out outreach for the whole county. So. Northern New Hampshire tends to be a little bit more conservative on that stuff, so. Right. And, and I don't go to church. Um, in fact, when I lived in the South, people would ask me, and I'm like, yeah, I'm Jewish, but whatever. Um, they're like, oh, no, that's what I meant. It doesn't matter. Yeah, right. Anyway, um, <laughs> all the time. Croydon has two churches, and I know a lot of people who go to church, but they, again, it's not in your face, and they just go. There's a communities that develop around churches. I think that's a tradition in New England in general. All right, I think we've got time for the last couple of questions. Oh, oh 
I'll try to be quick so some more people can go after me. Uh, yeah, I uh, um, come from a, a beach resort town in New Jersey, uh, Belmar, and uh, we're, my wife and I are real beach bums, and we'd like to uh, um, live by the beach. So we're looking at Hampton Beach, and we've spent a lot of time there, and I'm just wondering, you know, there's not a lot of choices when it comes to beach towns in New Hampshire. <laughs> so I guess it's basically just Hampton or Rye, you know? And, uh, you know, Hampton seems more affordable and has more, more beach. So um, the, how's the, the government there? Is it run pretty well? Because where we come from in New Jersey, it's uh, a lot of these beach towns are just run so badly, you know. No, I don't think you'll find that in the New Hampshire Sea Coast. I mean, like you said, we've only got about 18 miles of beach, and so there's only a very few towns that, that it touches against. Um, probably the, the most uh, um, exclusive town is, uh, is Newcastle. It's a very small island yeah. right there near Portsmouth. Uh, property prices is very high. All the towns, if, you, if you're, well, we're you're looking dead at set Hampton, in being in a beach ha town. We like Hampton Beach, the north, north end of Hampton Beach, like north of uh, Boar's Head there. Yeah. The, yeah I, it, but is the town run pretty well? The towns are, is, yes. We, we, my kids went it. to school in Hampton. The, 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 town, oh, really? the schools are run very well there. Um, they've got more tax dollars to, to deal with so, that, so the schools are, are better. Right. Um, you, so, but you, you can just move in. A, property prices plunge dramatically move a town inland, move another town inland. No, we want to be within walking oh, distance okay. or bicycle distance to right. the beach. So. so you really, you want a beach that's on the ocean, because there are other things that you could call beaches, like there's a lake where they've made kind of a beach. The okay, ocean. just checking. The ocean. <laughs> so, and, uh, if I could just ask one more quick question. In, Bel in uh, New Jersey, all these towns are going there banning smoking on the beach, and you know, I've been smoking 30 something years, it's then spending all day on the beach, it's not something change I'm willing to make. So fortunately, in New Jersey, there's an out because you can get on, if you go east of the high tide line, it's still state property and they don't have a, a ban yet. So you just, you're out of range of the local cops. But uh, it, 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 there's no uh, anything to fear about uh, um, the Hampton Beach, for example, banning smokers. I know it's a state park. so it's Not as far as I'm range. aware. I, you know, I, I haven't heard about anything like that being Good. banned. All right, so. thank you. All right, last question. And uh, we'll be around for uh, answering questions if you want to grab anyone uh, in particular to get specific. So uh, feel free to grab us after the fact. Go ahead. I just want to first thank you all for being here and answering questions. My question is, uh, we're looking around the outside the Plymouth area and some of the lower tax towns there that don't have zoning, that sort of thing. Uh, up in the Coos County, right in Berlin, uh, is can you provide me any feel for which towns might be like Hebron, Groton, those areas up in this area might have similar characteristics to those type of uh, towns? You mean similar to her area? <laughs> well, in Coos County. Uh, it's Coas. Oh, Co Coas. Coas. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. For I don't know where Coos is, is, but thank Coas. You for, I know. Thank you for correcting <laughs> me on that. Um. There's a lot of towns in Coas County that are very rural. Um, literally right over this mountain range to your, your what is this, over here, anyway, whatever. Um, Stark, 675 residents in the whole town. Um, they have a selectman board, you know, three people. They run the whole town on a budget of under a um, million dollars, the whole town. So no zoning, do what you want, build a stick house, build a, a tree house, whatever you want. It's, you know, taxes are actually pretty low. Taxes in Coas County anyway are pretty low, period. So, okay. and, and there's a lot of rural, tons of rural. Yeah, because I went on, there's a, on the internet a posting of what the, the uh, tax rates are, but of course that corresponds with how much the property is. Right. So. Well, keep in mind that the man always gets his tax dollars. <laughs> So, like, my taxes are low in Berlin. You know, I only pay 2600 a year for my taxes, but it's based on an evaluation of $69,000. Well, I only bought my house for thirty seven. Right. So, it's so again, it's all relevant. Oh, yeah. So That's what I'm saying, that they, they post the tax rate, but it's based on the value of the property. So. Right. Even though the value is, according to them, sixty nine, it's actually a nigh because it's only thirty seven. Right. That's what I paid. Right. I don't know. No. So, as far as... Uh, going between uh, if you're still working or own a business okay. in Massachusetts and coming up here uh, and wanting to be here like and go down to Massachusetts once once a week what the, the Coes County would still be something that would be what town I didn't get the question I know I'm, I'm not 
what town in uh, along 93 in Coates County would offer something that it does in the Plymouth oh, area. Oh, oh. Actually, there are no towns in 93. <laughs> okay, so n nothing in Coates County is along 93? No, no. Okay, so you have to come more towards yeah, the west. Yeah, when you get off the exit at, what, after Franconi, which is what, 32, yeah, 31? Nope, that's Grafton. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we have okay. no highway. We just have right, Route 16 and Route 3. And, <laughs> I'll have to look at the counties and see where things are. Yeah. But I'm just trying to get a feel for it. Yeah. Okay, I'll talk with you after. Thank you. Thank you for the question. A lot of, uh, a lot of the unanswered questions can be found by networking with uh, the folks in the, in the audience or on the stage. Um, networking goes a lot further in finding housing and uh, getting answers on specific towns and whether or not they actually enforce zoning and all those sorts of things. Thank you for uh, paying attention, bringing a lot of good questions to us. For those of you who have not signed the statement of intent, I have some here. Come on up. Mike, We'd can like we get a quick, get we get a quick closing list. statement? Pardon? Quick closing statement? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so please, please come visit uh, the Keene area. We have Keenevention that happens at the end of October. And it's October 30th through November 1st, I believe, this year. So right during Halloween, we're going to have a good time. We'll have a Halloween uh, dance party. And it's a great excuse to come out, see the area, meet some of the activists out there. It's an activist-focused convention. It's much smaller than this. In fact, there's probably as many people in this room that will be attending the entire uh, Keene Vention. So it's much more intimate. And uh, there's 150 reasons to move to the Keene area that you can find at move.freekeene.com. He's, he's got it down. Um, the best piece of advice I heard from people about moving here. If you don't know where to live, come visit if you can. Go around the state. There are meetups everywhere. You can meet people. But if you still don't know where to live, move to Manchester. Stay a year. Look around. Find a place you want to live. And I'll put in one last pitch for the Lakes region. We have a picnic on the beach. Where's beach? July 25th. Come on down. Join us. Eric? And I can pitch Coas County in many ways, but we have um, an ATV, ATV festival coming up in the end of July. 5,000 ATVs converge onto Berlin. Uh, we also do River Fire. We're competing with Keene for River Fire for the biggest pumpkin um, display. We have a whole bridge that we cover with pumpkins. Um, we do that the week before Thanksgiving. There's all kind of nice things to do in Coas County. Like she said, I absolutely recommend what she said. When my wife and I moved to Berlin, we actually came up here for three months every weekend and just scoped out the area to see if we would like it. Then we rented for six months before we decided, yep, we want to move here. And Laconia now has Pumpkin Fest without riots. <laughs> and no bear cats? Oh, Berlin's got that. <laughs> Thank you all for paying attention and uh, come on up. <laughs>